Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Axel Sounds 2 video. And in today's video, it's a pleasure to be joined by Chummy Phillips. Chummy, how are we, man? Yeah, good, thank you, yourself. I'm doing very well, thank you. And like I say, pleasure to speak to you ahead of your professional debut. And, you know, you're someone who's caught my eye and somebody who's I'm very interested to see how the fight goes, the professional debut goes on September 7th on the top tier card. But before we get into that whole kind of professional scene, I want to get people to understand you as a fighter. And so I'm going to start with the question, which I always like to start off with being, why did you start boxing? Um, well, I was, from a young kid, I was quite good at football, um, and clubs used to reach out to, um, particularly my sis my sister, um, about me doing trials and stuff, um, didn't materialise because obviously my parents being of an African background, it's, um, academics first, I wasn't really doing well at school, and due to that, they took me out of football to get me to focus on um school um fast forward i was chasing football 18 years old i realized nothing's going to materialize jumped in uh the boxing gym after a mate suggested it um just so i could get fit and sort of like for to get ready for like a last chance saloon mm -hmm. at, at football um and they asked me after about a month or two in the gym do i want to fight i said yes i'm just one of them people um i don't really say no so um Yeah, that's how the journey began. Had my first fight, I stopped the kid in like 40 seconds. Wow. And I thought, oh, okay, like, fit, like <laughs> I'm all right at this. Mm -hmm. I carry on. So they kept asking me to fight week after week after week. Um, I just kept going. And then I think where the screw sort of um, turned was watching um, my good friend, Rico. Well, you guys know him as Moses. Mm -hmm. I, I witnessed him sparring and I was like flipping out. Like, I want to be able to do that to people. Um, So um, that's what made me want to actually take boxing seriously. Um, went to uni, linked up with uh, Shiny Singh, who's fight as the main event um, for my debut. Uh, won the British unis with him, and yeah, here we are. Mm -hmm. Here we are. It sounds like a, an excellent journey so far. And I suppose, like you've mentioned, that amateur time that you had, what would you say was that kind of main highlight from the amateurs for you? The highlight probably would be winning the British University Championships just because that was the first bit of success that made me, it gave me the spark that I can achieve in the sport. It's always going to be your, your first bit of success, winning something, a tournament or whatever it may be. Um, that's what sets off every fighter, I would I would assume. So, um, so yeah, that's probably got to be my best memory. It was the first... Um, competition I've ever been in first time I've actually had to properly like make weight in the category um it was over three days back to back so it was tough um and on paper I wasn't meant to to win it really um and I did so it was definitely a sweet memory And these uni competitions, they're not always kind of heard about from the amateur background, but I suppose what are the, the kind of level, how high do you believe the level is in these competitions? They are good. Like one of uh, my teammates, actually, Macaulay Owen, um, he's obviously Sam of Queensbury. He's won it twice, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there are a few pro boxers I know about um, also who who went to uni and won it as well. Obviously, you got um, another teammate, former teammate of mine, Amir, Amir Abu Baker. Um, Uh, I think he just boxed on a GBM show. He, he, I believe, got to the final of the Brit. So it, it is it is a good competition. I know Dan Aziz, I believe, won a uh, British um, university championships. And there's another fighter, which I can't put my name on, uh, which I can't uh, think of off the top of my head. But yes, it's good levels. Mm -hmm. Indeed, no, some uh, some good fighters that you're naming there. And obviously for yourself now, after that amateur pay degree that you've sustained, you're now going into professional rankings. And I suppose, why did you choose now to do so? Um, to be honest with you, I've always been looking at the, the professional game. Obviously, if you type in boxing, for someone that's not been in boxing, if you type in boxing on YouTube, it's not going to show you amateur fights. 
um, that's the reality of it. So I grew up with uh, with my eyes being walking out to the ring and the big lights and the amateurs for me was really a formality and um, getting experience, um, at which I knew I needed. But truth be told, from about my eighth or ninth fight, um, after I won uh, the British um, University Championships, obviously lockdown happened, I think maybe a month after. And I didn't want to be sitting around stale. I actually asked my, my coach at the time, Shiny Singh, what does he think about me turning pro? He said, obviously, I need a bit more experience and whatnot. So up until from back then, which is what, 2021 or 2020, until now, I've not really actually wanted to be an amateur. It was just all about gaining experience, um, which I've gained now. And I've always wanted to be here and I feel like I've been destined to be here. So I'm 24 years old. Um, I've got like good, my strength and all these sort of factors that you don't need to question. Um, so I think it's a perfect time for me. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, it seems like you were listening to your coach very well and not turning professional obviously too soon. And I suppose how important is it to keep that kind of discipline with your coach and kind of keeping that, keeping it real with your coach? Yeah, it's, it's important. Um, it's important. The dynamic between a coach and um, and a fighter is it's one of the most important things in boxing, to be honest with you, because at the end of the day, they're the ones um, almost with your, li with your life in their hands. If they teach you something that's wrong on fight night, it's going to show. Um, obviously, if that's something that's a repeated a mistake. Um, but yeah, listening to them, obviously they've got a wealth of experience. You're not going to be the first fighter they've trained. So they've got a lot of trial and error. They know what works. And um, yeah, so you just got to put your trust in, and uh, belief in them. Obviously, I'm um, I'm with my coach now, Kevin Lilly, who I haven't been with for years and years. But the trust we've built already in this short space of time, it's it's been great. Mm -hmm. That's excellent to hear. And of course, like I mentioned, this top tier show for your debut. And I suppose in general, when did you hear about their interest in having you on one of their shows? Um, to be honest, I met uh, Johnny Clark um, probably the same month I decided to turn pro, which was, I think, about April time or end of March, uh, I was at a Queensbury show mm -hmm. and um, we met He's good people and uh, I know my manager's good good friends with him. So uh, I, I had an, an inkling that I would probably be on one of his shows if the opportunity arose. And then obviously um, I got the phone call, do I want to box on his show? I said, yeah, hell yeah. Um, he's got a great production um, and whatnot. So... Yeah, I've 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 had a I've had a feeling for for quite a while. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. And I suppose his shows are shows which are progressing. Like say the production are excellent. And I suppose do you feel like he's branched away from being a small ball promoter, and these aren't really small ball shows anymore? Yeah, I've been I've been saying that. Um, I've been saying that he's not small hall. He's more medium hall. Mm -hmm. Um. Which um, but I think I think Johnny, I like Johnny because it's not that he lacks ambition, but I like the fact that he wants to. He keeps labeling himself as small hall, and mm -hmm. he wants to be the best of small hall. Not to say that it's not achievable for him to be as big as the big promoters, but it's a hell of a task when you're looking at the guys like Matchroom and what they're doing with Riyadh season to top that and be the best at the minute. It's that's serious ambition and some may even call it delusion. So um, I think he's doing a great job in the small hall shows. He's given fighters that might not get big opportunities, essentially a big opportunity. When you look at it now, everyone's on the zone. Like who would have thought on a ticket selling show, you got fighters that are all going to be displaying their talents and skills on, on um, the biggest platform in boxing. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And for yourself, making a professional debut, I'm sure you're going to want to go and put out a show, I suppose. What in general are fans to expect from you? Um, A bit of everything. Um, 
to be honest with you, I don't really think there's anything I, I can't do. I really can box. I know the label um, about me is the power and knockouts and whatnot, but I really can box. If I choose to, I can make... I can make um fighters look silly. I have done that in the amateurs um against top operators as well, but and I can also walk you down and stalk you, be a pressure fighter. Um so a bit of everything. I'm not your typical English hands up, all that sort of style. Um I think I've got more of an American style. They are the fighters that I obviously watched for years, um, starting out the sport. So um I've sort of replicated what I've seen from them. So I would say explosivity, um, flair, speed, everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's perfect three things to say right there. And in general, I suppose you say you've been watching these American type fighters since you've been coming up. And are you able to list some names of fighters for me? Yeah. So during the lockdown, I discovered Jerron Lennis, who look at him now. Yeah. When I saw him, I thought flipping out. Um, hell of a talent. Um. Been a big fan of your the likes of Tank. Um, been a big fan of Shakur Stevenson. Um, been a big fan of Adrian Broner, especially his one thirty days. He was a monster. One thirty five days ish. He was a monster. Um, obviously, whatever happened with him and his personality is what it is. But when you look at him raw, for what he is as a fighter, he was a great talent, generational talent. Um. So those are Andre Ward as well. Um, all those type of, types of fighters I looked up to. When you speak about a fighter like Adrian Broner, I suppose as somebody like yourself who's trying to make a name for himself, how important do you think it is for, you know, of course you're probably going to, going to believe that you can go all the way to the top, and how important is it to when you get there to make sure that these lights and everything don't distract you? Yeah, of course. Funny enough, I have this conversation with one of my friends the other day and you know um doing the the interviews and being around people and people speaking highly of you and all of that sort of stuff it can get into your into your brain if you allow it and you just gotta take it with a pinch of salt um and not get carried away i think what happens is um some fighters they kind of get high on their own supply and um you know, they forget what got them to where they were and all sorts. Um, at the same time, I think a bit of complacency uh, plays a part because a lot of these fighters that I mentioned and started boxing from a kid, mm -hmm. I started at 18. Mm -hmm. So I've always had the mentality I'm playing catch-up. I don't have time to waste. I'm dilly-dallying, going clubbing, going partying messing with girls, all these sorts of things. So I don't I don't imagine we'll ever have that problem personally. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant to hear. And obviously making professional debuts, I suppose sometimes that co does come with an element of, of nerves. Have you ever really suffered with that? Um I used to suffer with nerves barring like when I was an amateur. I used to when I knew that they were like, oh this is time national champion or whatnot, I used to get nervous. Now, I, I couldn't care less. I, I'll be honest, I'm very chilled, nonchalant. Um, I think a lot of people would, would agree with that when, when they see me. I'm not massively outspoken. Nothing really phases me, um, to be honest with you. So in terms of nerves, I'll be honest, there, there, there is none. There, may, there probably will be doing the ring walk, you know, seeing all the people coming out to support you and whatnot. But once the bell goes, yeah, it's... um. It's game on. No time for nerves. Mm -hmm. Game on indeed. And obviously you're in, in training camp at the moment and I'm sure it's going very well. And I suppose if you're able to kind of tell me your, your weekly schedule at the moment, how much time is boxing taking up in your life? It's, um, A lot, you know, five days a week in the gym, travelling down to Wickford. Um. It's a, it's a lot of my time, you know. Um, obviously, running as well as that. So really, I'm training like six days out of the week. Um, one full rest day alongside working. Um, as well, it is tough, but I'm enjoying it. You know, I love this sport. Um, and I'm willing to to do whatever is required to to get to where I want to be. Um, 
So yeah, it takes a lot of my time, but uh, it's good. So I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And obviously, like I say, just starting out at the moment, but I'm sure you're wanting and aiming to keep as active as possible throughout the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. Especially this uh, first year as a pro. Um, you know, get this one out of the way. <laughs> if we can fit one in end of the month as well, mm -hmm. I'll be more than happy. So I really want to be active. Um, as they say, uh, an active fighter is a great fighter. You know, um, how do you get better if you're not active? And that's that's the sport of boxing. So yeah, I'm hoping um speak to my manager and we get the 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 next one booked in uh once I'm successful on the seventh of September. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like fighters like you say that activity is so important? Do you feel like fighters who again are at a really high level, when they kind of start becoming less and less active and maybe picking their fights a bit more, do you think that does just genuinely damage their career? Yeah, it does. It plays it plays a hell of a of a part um in the deterioration of performances. I mean, you, you for example, you can look at Errol Spence, mm -hmm. hell of a fighter, but I think that fight is completely different had he been an active um had he been active full stop, you know. Um especially the thing is with fighters, when you haven't got that date locked in and whatnot. All you are doing really is training a little bit, but you're not on weight really. And it can only get worse. The longer you don't have a fight day and something to focus on, you binge and you do whatnot. And for fighters at the top, it doesn't help. Um, look at, for example, Nick Ball. You mm -hmm. know, he had what? Two back-to-back -back camps for mm -hmm. two world uh, championship fights. And arguably he beat two, two world champions in the space of what? what was it, three months or something? Something like that. So activity is key, man, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you've got a, an amazing boxing brain as well, which I appreciate. And in general, I suppose, aspirations-wise, how far do you believe you can go in the sport? Um. Yeah, this, this question, it's an interesting one because I don't want to be generic like everyone else and say, oh, world champion, I wouldn't be in this X, Y, Z. Um, the truth is... I couldn't tell you. My 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 coach um was obviously sitting in with me with my my board meeting, and he said to them that he'd be disappointed, or shocked if I wouldn't if I wasn't anything above um British British champion, as in that's the minimum for him. And I agree with him. But in terms of me, I wouldn't. I would be lying to you to say, oh, categorically, I'm gonna be a world champion. I'm gonna be this, this, and that. The the truth of the matter is I could be more than that, mm -hmm. but we, we don't know. Um, Like I said, I started the sport at 18 years old and what I can already do, for, for me personally and from my coach's perspective, it's scary, you know, not to think of being 10 years into this into this sport like a lot of um kids I'll be fighting have been. And um, I, I really can't say. The sky's the limit, I think. And I think... When all is said and done, they're going to say that what people will say about my career is that I overachieved. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't mind that being the case. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the way that you are able to sell yourself. And it sounds like, you know, I'm, I'm we're very excited to see this debut now and see how your career progresses. And it's been a pleasure speaking to you today, Jimmy. And I'm going to leave with this final question, which I always like to ask. It's basically just open up the floor. Is there anything you want to shout out, promote, anything like that? I um, just want to say thank you, of course, to my manager, uh, Leon Susbury, Takeover Sports Management, my coach, Kevin Lilly. Um, you know, they gave me a chance when a lot of people wouldn't. Coaching-wise, um, management-wise, people were kind of turning a blind eye. I wasn't one of these amateurs that won, you know, five national championships and X, Y, Z. They, they took a gamble on me just on the fact that they believe I'm a good fighter. Um, I was trialing at numerous trainers, uh, gyms, um, and they were saying, listen, like he's a real fighter. And it sparked the partnerships with the two people that are behind me at the minute. So I'm so grateful for, to them, grateful to everybody that's supporting me, my family, um, my sponsors. Um, that have, Some of them have even been with me since the amateurs, you know, which is rare. Um, so I'm grateful, man. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to putting on a show for everybody come September the seventh. Mm -hmm.
Brilliant stuff, man. Well, like I say, it's a pleasure again. And um, like I say, best of luck with this upcoming debut of yours. And hopefully we can catch up again soon. And uh, so if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you didn't need like the video. And thanks for watching.